there any relevance of native speaker norms? That's a question for tephalologists. Is it better to focus on form or to focus on forms? That's a question for tephalologists. If you use a textbook, is your classroom authentic? Or should your approach be more learner-centric? From feedback to learner autonomy, we'll discuss it all on Tephalology. Welcome back to the Tephalology Podcast, a podcast all about teaching English as a foreign language and related matters. Today we bring you a bonus interview episode. The following interview features me talking to Eric Hawkinson. Eric is Associate Professor of Learning Design and Technology at the University of Fukuchiyama in Kyoto and coordinator of JALT's Mixed, Augmented and Virtual Realities in Learning Special Interest Group, topics of which are discussed in this interview. This interview was recorded at the JALT PANSIG conference that took place in Tokyo earlier this month. The PANSIG conference celebrates the work of the many special interest groups that makes up the larger professional association. The interview was part of the Teacher Development SIGs forum I helped organise, titled Exploring the Role that SIGs Play in Teacher Development, Three Interviews. More information about Eric and Eric's special interest group can be found in the description to this episode. A videoed version of this interview is also available on YouTube. We'd like to thank Eric for giving his permission to share this interview and to the other participants and attendees of the forum. Thank you for having us. It's great to be here. We're such a young SIG and it's really, it's an opportunity for us to come and try to explain who we are yeah, and yeah. things like that. So that, thank, thanks for having us. That was definitely part of my thinking. Great. Thing to, like, inviting you. Um, so maybe just to begin, could, like the other two interviews, could you um, personally introduce yourself first? Hello everybody. <laughs> my name is Eric Hawkinson. Please call me Eric. I'm originally from Arizona in the States. I've been in Japan about 15 years living in, uh, I call it upstate Kyoto, <laughs> and, uh, and um, I recently moved to Kyoto. We just started a new school at the Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. It's called the School of Global Engagement, and I designed some courses for our track in global tourism. So uh, I haven't started teaching them yet, but uh, as soon as our students get to the second and third year, I'll be teaching courses like New Media Marketing and Tourism, uh, New Media Lab, Mice Theory, and um, Digital Literacy. So uh, issues related to our digital self and our digital society, how it relates to how we live and travel and communicate, basically, in general. Great. Thank you very much. And there's a, you, you mentioned tourism there, and I have a question about that. I noticed, yeah. <laughs> um, um, in terms of the mixed, augmented virtual realities um, SIG, <laughs> could you tell us about your, it's a very new SIG, it maybe started, is it just two years ago? Um, yeah, well, technically, we started just over a year ago, and our first presentation as a group, as a formed forming SIG was at this pan SIG just last year. So in a sense, this is our first year anniversary in a way, coming back to pan SIG. So we're right. very, very young, very, very new, and still trying to find our footing in many ways. Right. And um, yeah, could you tell us about the, the kind of the focuses of your... Right. I, I imagine there's many judging by... <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is... Um, yeah, because on the surface, um, many people have the maybe the, the tendency to think about this as technology-based, of the tools that are coming out. Um, but a lot of our members feel that it's not just mainly about the technology, the virtual technology, which is iterating and coming out faster and faster, which we, if on the surface you looked at our papers and our, our communications, you'll see some new fancy tools or apps or things that we're trying to share and focus on. But on the deeper aspect of it, um, we're trying to focus on what these represent moving forward. And I think, Maybe if you want to, there's many ways to describe it, but disruption is one way to think about it, right? Because um, uh, Michael McLuhan has a famous quote, we, we make our tools and thereafter they shape us, right? So the internet age is 
caused us to communicate and interact with each other in very unique and new ways. And we think these new things that are coming out represent another paradigm shift in the way this is happening. And we're trying to navigate that and figure our own way as we move into this, this new area. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, no, <laughs> And um, kind of just, I guess, to exemplify that, uh, yes, I attended your forum, your six Great, forum. thanks for coming. And you, um, I, I went there as a complete beginner, novice, not knowing anything. And um, I think there were five presentations. And they all yes. dealt with very different areas of um, Yes, it was very diverse. We're, yeah. Um, can you give us a, maybe a few examples of, of what, what took place yesterday? Oh, great. And how it relates to what you just said. Perfect. Yeah, we're very excited about the, the variety and scope that just came out. Because we're, again, just one year later, we had one presentation. And one year later, we had six very diverse, very interesting applications and uses of uh, this idea that we're presenting forward. And uh, there's a spectrum there, too, because thinking about realities, right, we're all in this quote unquote real world, and we can debate if we're in that right now as well. <laughs> but there's virtu virtual elements, digital elements being incorporated in very different ways. And so we had some technical people, like developing apps and creating new technologies and uses and new tools for us. And then on the other side of it, we had some people with some very passionate, very unique social causes that were trying to connect using connect people and ideas with using this technology. So for example, we had Vanessa and uh, Elizabeth talk about how they're using augmented reality to connect uh, both students and teachers in Japan with those affected by the hurricane in Puerto Rico. Um, there was an academic writings uh, story by Jen Teeter where she's putting students in virtual worlds to experience what it's like to become a refugee and kind of go through the paces of going and being making the decision to leave your home and the consequences and choices you have to make along the way to then inspire or inform students into maybe maybe taking a different perspective in the way in the voice that they which they want to write about these situations so the immersiveness of that technology and how that might affect your own thinking as, as you approach academic writing. And then on the other side of things, we have some people developing some new, cool, fascinating uh, applications and tools. Ewan Bonner and Aaron Frazier had a short talk about a new app they're developing where they place cubes around campus, and you can use this app and this Dancing Monkey will show you around campus, the kind of run around, we look almost like a Pokemon Go example, yeah. and um, tell you where to go and what's available on campus, like a yeah. individualized, customized, virtual tour of campus yeah. kind of thing. So yeah, um, some, 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 oh, some, um, <laughs> some of the ideas I had yesterday was that like, this technology is, I guess, supplementing, but also transforming, and um, kind of opening the students up to, um, yeah, beyond, I guess, the reality of the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's kind of bringing multiple realities into the into the space, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so well, it makes sense to me. All of that <laughs> on the spot there. Um, changing the topic slightly to um, talk, thinking about the, um, the formation of the SIG itself, and I guess for a lot of people in the JAL family, they may not see the differences between... Uh, the JAL call SIG and, and your SIG, um, what, what are the differences? How do they right. differ or overlap? Um, well, there are similarities and there are differences. And this has been a question that's come up quite often, actually. And I kind of touched on it before. It's not necessarily about the technology. It's about what it represents. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if you want to talk about call in general, which a lot of our members also are a member of Call, and they do other technological, or if you're developing apps, you're also working in that space as well. So there's overlap, of course. But you talk about Call, and then that evolved into Mall, and maybe Tall, and then yeah. each step along the way, there's this evolution of how you see and view the technology, in that, in that technology in general. But as a medium, right, so we had the computer age, and a lot of universities, they've had Call Rooms forever. And then we're moving into the mobile age. But each that step also had a paradigm shift in how we use and communicate with each other. But now it's this this digital contest is becoming so ubiquitous 
so everywhere. It's jumping out. We have it on our pockets right now, but it's going to be so much everywhere. This is going to be another step, another change, another paradigm shift. And we believe that's that's where it starts to break away from the traditional call, yeah. one-to-one computing type stuff or the mobile learning type stuff. It's just, it's less, almost less about the technology and more about how it, uh, how humans are interacting with digital concepts and digital content rather than the tools itself. Um, <clears throat> thinking about the evolution of mass media, right? So the, we have the TV, there was a meme yesterday. Um, what was the meme? Uh, 40 years ago, your mom was telling you, st- st- get back from the TV, you're too close, and now we're putting them right two inches in front of our face. <laughs> so, but um, <clears throat> that jump, right? So the TV, we, we were worried about that, and that was kind of the beginning of the call era, like the, the, the interactive media, the immersive media, and now the internet changed that to where we were interacting with each other not just passively accepting it, but now we're entering into another shift where it's just so behind the scenes and everywhere that it's yeah. almost unthinkable. And when we're, we're thinking about concepts like, well, what happens if it goes away? It's like losing a part of your brain, right? This is, we're, we're already not remembering phone numbers as much because we have them accessed in our pockets. What if we have a phone in our face that tells us people's names and their backgrounds automatically? Are we going to remember names less? These are the kinds of things that are starting to break away, we feel, from, from call in general. But yeah. Yeah. also, we just want to, we feel ourselves as disruptors too. We want to do, be able to have some freedom and flexibility. So that's another reason why we wanted right. to do something separate and different. And um, I guess, like, I guess you've answered my next question, but do you think the establishment of your SIG is reflective of? I guess the wider society of um, people using this kind of technology in, in the, not just in the classroom but in their daily lives. Right. Um, Has one kind of followed the other? Or well, uh, Jolt is mainly right. We're talking about language learning in general, but a lot of our members and our membership is thinking about how this is going to change in general society and how we communicate with each other. Right. Think about if you could appear. Which the Gail was up here just before us. What if you could appear to other people as any gender you wanted to, mm-hmm. right? You could you can now shape and mold your own identity in a digital form, however you want, right? So this has implications in how we present ourselves and how we view ourselves, more than just thinking about the tools and the technology itself. It's more reflective about our humanity in general. Yeah. Um, so moving on now to teacher development and. Um, I'll read my question for this. It's quite a long one. So, um, although developments in mixed, augmented, and virtual reality have been going on for some time, perhaps uh, many teachers have still yet to incorporate these tools into their classroom. Um, firstly, how could um, perhaps I maybe uh, talk about myself? How could you encourage me or me as the collective teacher um, to take up this technology in the classroom? What What would be the first steps? Because um, when I see boxes like this, right? This one? Is this intimidating to you at it's all? It's intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just wondering how we, how we, what would you tell the novice teacher? And, um, right. Where's, where's the starting point, I guess? Yeah, I mean, the, a lot of, we have some members that are not technically minded at all, and I want to make that clear. This is not necessarily about the technology. It's about how it affects us and how we, we use it to communicate and use it for each other. So just pointed to this device here. This just came out. This is a new device, right? This has only been available for a week. And you just strap basically an uh, entertainment device to your face and you have it walking around. But it's a lot of fun. So <laughs> you can get something like that, of course. But if you want to just hop into what people are doing, you can. there are tools and very inexpensive ways to just try out the technology. One very inexpensive thing is called Google Cardboard. So it's basically a box, a cardboard box, and you put your phone in it, right. and you can maybe uh, view some 360 immersive video. So we are used to watching what the director of a film wants us to see, right? They're pointed the camera in a specific way. They cut the scenes in a specific way to help us feel and, and emote to that situation. But 360 video is helping us change that thought pattern, right? Because now you can buy this cardboard device, put your phone in it, and you can, your, the director can't tell you what to look at and how to feel, all right? Well, there's music in the background, of course, but 
You can just simply experience life from somebody else's perspective. And you can experience it in a way that you have enough input into it where you feel like you have some, some um, agency in, from that perspective as well. So Google Cardboard and 360 Video, is, as a tool-wise, is a great place to start. Um, is, is there a danger with, with this technology, as there is with all technology, that um, the, the, the wow factor kind of gets in the way of... Um, I think I went to a presentation by Stephen Bax um, some years ago, and he talked to... He, kind of, he, he was kind of trying to warn us of... Um, not being blinded by the technology, mm. but trying to think, is this going to be, is this going to lead to pedagogically sound right. principles and outcomes? And um, yeah, what would you say to those kind of skeptics, I guess? <clears throat> That's what I feel like what our SIG is some of the most important work that we should be doing is trying to be a little more skeptical about the technology because on the, the commercial side of it, right, um, they're selling this as the next great thing, right? This is going to transform the world, which it is, but... Of course, they're reluctant to talk about some of the implications and the dangers and the uh, problems inherent with this technology. And one of them is, is the data gathering aspect of it. We already had seen some trouble with Facebook and the Cambridge Analytica stuff. And this technology is going to exacerbate that in ways we haven't even begun to think of yet, right? So think about using an immersive technology. Not only do you can gather data about where that person is and how they're using it, you now know where, what they're looking at, how they're experiencing it, and how they're using that technology. So you're gathering even like even medical information about people in ways that we haven't even begun to understand. So. That's one of the hopefully more important work that we'd want to try and help focus on and communicate to the larger world in general about mainly privacy issues and how this affects something called the divided brain, right? So we've seen this with the Pokemon Go example, right? So people are climbing fences to get into private areas to hunt for virtual things that aren't there in the real world. So your, your mind is now... Half there in the real world, half there in the divider. We're already seeing this on the, you go any plat, train platform in Japan and people are looking down at their phones because they're half with their virtual uh, identity and lives and half there in the real world. So this is going to become an even bigger and heavier trend as we start moving forward. All right. Okay. Thank you. And go, going back to um, teacher development, um, could you tell us some stories about how maybe members of your SIG or people using um, this kind of technology have, um, I guess, developed their techniques as teachers or um, tell us some stories, but maybe further afield too, um, about how teachers have begun to incorporate this into their classes. Uh, there's a ton of great stuff that's happening in classes with the technology stuff. Um, talking about putting students in different places and different Identities, for example, uh, the Jen Teeter example before with the um, the refugee stories, right? But in general, um, we're going on trips now for, in the classroom to places that we could never go before, right? Uh, one of our members, Parisa, has been taking students and trying to break their stereotypes of Iran by taking them into beautiful mosques and to the snow top mountains of Iran, where this is not the usual thing that students perceive of that place, right? So uh, something called Google Expeditions, where you can take a whole classroom on a virtual field trip to anywhere, um, and um, even places that you might not even think of, like not, not, not actually a physical place on Earth, but you can take students into you know, the heart of a DNA stru structure, or on the surface of Pluto, or um, examples like that in the classroom too, yeah. But in general, as far as teacher development goes, I think what this technology can represent. There was a comment earlier about SIGs being uh, geographically separated, and this technology is allowing us to embody actually physical avatars and be have that feeling of proximity to each other uh, using this technology. So moving forward, as far as teacher development, we, yeah. you can you can see uh, this being used more and more as people to be able to get together and share talks and have the conversations like you, this, this TV was, I guess, looking to share, right, to your conversation. So you can have some feel, more feeling of proximity to each other using these more immersive technologies to share the conversations that yeah, you have. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 
Just um, something you mentioned you mentioned about tourism, and I, I currently work in a tourism faculty, and right. I'm thinking about how can I incorporate, because I've seen recently um, tourism agencies have started to use, um, I think, uh, was it Bobby here? Bobby, yes, <laughs> um, he did, uh, gave a virtual tour of a campus uh, using um, virtual reality, I, I believe. Um, could you speak about tourism in general and how, right. could, how could this affect tourism? <clears throat> Yeah, Bobby uh, Figueroa yesterday was at our um, forum, and he he, represent, he showed us a, a tour, a virtual tour he's created for students, so they don't have necessarily have to come to campus. They can come and see what cam campus is like. And some of our other members are doing tours of uh, pre before you go study abroad, pre study abroad stuff, or so, uh -huh. see if that might reduce anxiety. So students are actually walking from where they might stay with a host family to campus, mm -hmm. right? Things like that. So before you go, so you're more concentrated on your studies and things, and less concentrated on the moment of where you have to be or yeah, where you have yeah. to go, and stressing yeah. about that. Uh, but tourism, yes, I, I didn't know you, that you worked in a tourism. So we just started this new. I mentioned that at the top, but we just started this new faculty in Kyoto, uh, global tourism track, and um, the classes I've designed are mainly focused on the technology side of it, and it's being used more and more. Right. And <clears throat> Maybe this is tangential, but the big question I have is, maybe you can all think about this question yourselves, is if you could virtually travel anywhere and kind of feel like you've been there, is that going to encourage more international travel in the future, or is that going to maybe curtail? I think both. <laughs> it just means that... Um, the way people want to experience their travel is going to be changing because of the technology. So more than using the technology to promote uh, marketing is on the internet is a big thing for travel now too. And, it, and um, uh, word of mouth is a big thing. So you want people, you want to be able to encourage people to share their experiences because the proximity, the friendship you have on social media is more important than advertising dollars these days. But <clears throat> more than that, um, the, the way that you're, Developing your tourism destinations, the focus of it, yeah. it needs to start evolving because if you are a, basically, basically, let's say you're a scenery, like the whole attraction of your tourism destination is this beautiful scene and you don't offer any other experience, therefore your t virtual visit has done 90% of what you would go there and yes. spend money on. Uh, a meal and taxi drive and all that stuff that the tourism dollars and people developing tourism want to yeah. to increase. So it, it's more than just using the technology to just understand how people's expectations and needs and um, and uh, the way they want to experience tourism uh, might need to evolve because yeah. of the technology. Yeah. Thank you. Again, and one final question, uh, just and also thinking ahead, um, what what's your future vision for your your SIG? Your, your uh, we're so young. It's just, <laughs> it's, um, we, well, when we started, we want, like I said, we, we want to, because we're, we feel like we're working with disruptions. We want to try to make a place where we can allow people to try new things and maybe fail at a couple of things because if that doesn't happen, we're not really pushing the boundaries and learning from and expecting some of the changes that might come on a broader scale for society and, and education in general. So we want to provide a nice, safe environment for and a flexible environment. So we tried, to, like for example, when we trying to form our charter and our our constitution, we just ripped out a bunch of the stuff that Jolt told us to write, and we just were we sticking to a set of values, right? Inclusivity, um, trying things new, and things like that. So. Uh, we're trying to use these values to guide us moving forward, but we really don't want to set yeah, a particular yeah. goal because that's going to impede on our ability to kind of go with the flow because this technology is iterating and changing at such a fast pace. Well, that's a great place to end it. Um, thank you very much, Eric. Thanks, Matt. Thank